Diddy Gate continues. We are investigating and we are alive and I have some amazing guests with me. BJ, that surprise witnesses here, as well as Lewis of Nerd Report. Welcome guys to the show. We are live. BJ, so nice to have you back. I'm glad you're here because for folks who don't know BJ over that surprise witness, she does amazing investigations into a lot of pop culture figures and things. But uh, we met way back during the Britney Spears Free Britney Initiative, and she has gone deep into that, really trying to uh, to expose the people behind it. You were getting fired because of these people. Like, they were no, threatening you. Uh, I didn't get well, fired. I quit. You quit. Thank <laughs> you. But, you know, you were being pressured by things, and you quit. And it was just super messed up the way that you were pushed out. But I'm glad you're here because we're going to talk about Ashton as just one example of many who I think are very scared. But before we even get there, I just want to sort of talk to BJ for a second about just how extreme this whole thing is, how deep it goes, because this Diddy Gate story is really connecting a lot of people. But let's go back to Britney because it really is there. We are Britney Spears was in a conservatorship where people, including, in my opinion, the judicial system, managers, TriStar management, my, to my speculation, her family, were all involved in basically keeping this woman a slave, forcing her to work, taking all of her revenue, and just basically saying, you want to see your kids? Uh, or do you want deadbeat Kevin Federline to keep seeing him get paid more? Well, then go to work, do the casino show, just stop complaining. You don't get to see anybody. They had surveillance in her room. Uh, what they were doing to her was criminal. It was disgusting, deplorable, vile. The worst words you can think of is what they were doing to her, making her get, take drugs, blood tests, putting her in, in insane asylums. The list is endless, BJ, right? So here we have this management firm behind it now connected to Diddy as well. How weird how all these things connect in Hollywood. Robin Greenhill is in uh, the producer Rod's uh, a lawsuit alleging that she was involved in payments to ex-workers and things. Are you surprised to see these villains, uh, of our, in our opinion, of the Britney Spears camp now showing their ugly heads in sort of these bigger Diddy type of cases? I'm not surprised in the least, no. And in fact, it's something that I have known for years and that you have known for years and that both of us and more and other people have been trying to alert the public to. I mean, I remember whenever all of those Britney documentaries and the coverage and the stories were all coming out. Oh God, I still, it still kind of makes me mad. Honestly, I'm still not fully, I don't know, recovered. I'm, not, I'm still not fully over it. Healed. Exactly. <laughs> because I remember when these documentaries came out and all this was going on and it was like, it was bittersweet because on the one hand, thank God, like now people, household names care about this and they're, you know, just as outraged about the, this conservatorship as me. But on the other hand, it feels like they all missed the point. Lou Taylor, in my opinion, was the major cog in this conservatorship wheel. And I feel like she just got off scot-free and hasn't, su hasn't suffered any consequence, hasn't been held accountable. She's dodging depositions. She's also Travis Scott's manager and was at the time of the whole Astro World thing. I mean, she's Jason Derulo's manager. She has her tentacles all over the place. Hollywood, country music, hip hop, pop. I mean, everything you can imagine. And I just knew that it was her who was really pushing this whole thing. And then a bunch of stuff's now come out in court. So it doesn't surprise me to see her name coming up again. And it probably will continue coming up, either her name or the one through uh, TriStar Sports and Entertainment. Yeah. TriStar Sports and Entertainment Management, Lou Taylor, Robin Greenhill, they've avoided depositions. They've avoided this. And this is where it all gets so great because we can focus on the celebrities at the party, Ashton Kutcher, et cetera. But there are so many other accountants and lawyers and managers and agents and higher up business people that are really involved and in allowing all this to happen that never get named. So just know we're we're paying attention to all of them. We will continue to expose them all. But right now, it's I I think that's just a good setup because yes, there's a lot of celebrities who are nervous too. And Ashton Kutcher, dude, Ashton Kutcher is so rich off of investments, friends with tech billionaires. Like Ashton Kutcher is not your run in the mill celebrity. You, you might know him from that '70s show, but dude has stake in like Uber and like so many big tech companies. Uh, he's no joke. And so he has his fingers in a lot of pots. And yeah, he and Diddy go way back. In fact, I've compiled a lot of stuff here, thanks to Steph 
producer Steph, Steph the alternate shout out. Uh, I want to go through why he's reportedly fearing this. There's several. Ashton Kutcher expecting a subpoena as Mila Kunis allegedly bans contact with Diddy amongst these lawsuits. Uh, he was a good friend. And if you go back, they had this weird white party where they were raising money for malaria, good cause, but whatever. Here's D Diddy with Demi and Ashton. Uh, and a uh, lot, lot of celebrities showing up to these events that Ashton and Diddy would throw together. Uh, we'll look at pure early 2000s celebrities, Tara Reid, everybody, look at, they're all there. Billy Zane, uh, all these people potentially, you know, not to say that they're involved, but Diddy and Ashton, Ashton this party. Give it up for Ashton, put you more time, that's all we have. The whole you, the whole you and I ain't no more. You know like a VHS Make again. sure what that we also buy some of those t-shirts. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And also, this is the legendary white party. We bought it from New York. New York makes some noise. We were now, we trying look. to show the West Coast we love them. We, this is this party looks a little bit nicer, but I wouldn't be surprised if this was the party for show, for public, <laughs> to justify the parties that they threw behind the scenes. Uh, but even these parties would get wild. Here's Ashton Putcher, Putcher falling into the pool. And, I don't know, a bunch of, bunch of chaos happening. I show you this just because I want you to understand this history between the two of them goes way back. And this clip was very telling. Here he was on Hot Ones, fair use to this clip, guys. Here he is on Hot Ones when, when uh, Sean Evans asked him about the infamous Diddy parties. Diddy party stories, they're our favorite genre of anecdote. If oh, you really? Have one, yeah. Wow, okay, I've got a lot I can't tell. <laughs> I got a lot I can't tell right out the gate. I got a lot I can't tell, okay. So, um, I can't tell that one either. <laughs> oh, it's so funny, isn't it, BJ? Oh, man. I mean, I'm like actually <laughs> cycling through them. There was one moment, so I, it's not really a party story, but... Our relationship was really bizarre, so it started over punked. He apparently almost tried to punk. We're gonna get there in a second. We got we got the receipts today, BJ. Yeah. He was like, "Yo, don't punk you me. You can't punk me." And I was like, "I don't want to tell you. Everybody's on the table." He's like, "Not me. I'm off the table." And so that started our conversation. We became fast friends. So big history. And we used to just uh, hang out, watch football together, and like. Whatever. And he came over and I was like, I'm going for a run. He's like, oh, I'll go for a run with you. And so he comes over to go for a run. About halfway through the run, he's like, yo, I'm running out of gas right now. But we had like paparazzi all around us at the time. He's like, you got to slow down and but make it look like you're not slowing down. Because he So even in a situation when they're in a marathon, he's got to intimidate his friends to do as he says. <laughs> I was thinking their friendship just started because he threatened him. Like, you better not punk me. Like their whole, the whole, all the stories he's telling are just like weird threats. Totally. Not only, I'm, I'm going to, don't punk me. I'm not allowed. Oh, and don't run so fast in this marathon. He had to, I don't want to look yeah. like I'm not going to be able to finish this thing. And he was losing it, right? Like he was like me right now with the wings and the heat starting to kick up. And he's like, <sighs> and we've, so we finish out the run and then he, he was so upset over the fact that he got skunked on this run that year he decided to run the new york marathon and so he just started immediately training for the so he's like all right i gotta up one up ashton is what they say what's what's crazy as this story continues is gonna i want to i can only play so many clips yeah. while he's losing it on wings bj and lewis he's losing it right like how you do in hot ones it's not what's really bothering him listen to this feel free <laughs> diddy party stories man that was like some weird memory lane. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> he's literally taking the hot wings challenge, but he's he's more bothered by the Diddy stories he just had to revisit in his mind. Yeah, it looks like and he's, went, Ugh. he's traumatized. So many traumatized, it seems. I, I mean, look, no proof. I don't know what that means, but it's yeah. all very strange. It's they all very strange. Here they are on the, you um, way back. You're, you're, James you're Corden. They're going way back. Friend. Here they are together. I learned how to do this in his studio. Like, I don't even like, he's like my coach. It's like, it's like if you, if Rocky was in a fight and the judge was the old, the old, you know, the guy. The guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he was, and then he said, no, you're dead. You lose. No, Ivan Drago wins. Yeah. It's awful. When did you first meet? Um, I was doing Making the Band on MTV. He was doing Punked. Yeah. And I gave him a call one day and I said, um, you can see Ash is kind of smiling, like, what story is he going to tell I her? I heard that you <laughs> are going to punk me, and I, I just don't think that's a good idea. 
Um, I, know I kind of don't think that that's the way you said it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Oh, well, then you tell the story. I'm pretty sure that's not the way you said it. Okay. I don't think that's a good idea. Is that what you said? <laughs> um, please don't punk me. <laughs> Almost. Um, can we work out a deal? I, I think it was... Can we work out a deal? He's settling with Ashton to pay him off so he doesn't get punked. Lewis, this is weird, right? Yeah, it's a uh, gangster, man. <laughs> okay, it's gangster. Uh, have you seen Diddy's other interviews where he's like, shames you if you don't go to his after parties because you know they're bad? He wants to get stuff on people. There's a lot of shady stuff uh, going on. The marathon thing uh, shows a big ego. Um, this too, he probably called them and threatened them. And didn't want to get, uh, he didn't want to look bad on MTV, man, with punk, you know, and he didn't want his image uh, tarnished or whatever he thinks his image is. Notice how funny all this stuff is to everyone in Hollywood and in the music industry. Then they make movies and make songs preaching at us, the consumer, don't how bad we are, how misogynist yeah. we are, how sexist we are, how abusive we are. And then when they're in a conversation, it's all funny. <laughs> this and that. Oh, yeah. Underage people at the party. Isn't that hilarious? Oh, my God. Screw these people, man. I can't stand them. That's why no one likes Hollywood or the music industry anymore. Because of these people, these kind of people preaching at us all the time. Look at Howard Stern making fun of the entire situation with Usher during that interview. And then they, they preach at us. It was funny to them, folks. Watch it again. It was hilarious. Yeah, well he said. It was and funny. I, it's true. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I want. I want to play this one more clip here. Thanks to Steph finding this. Now, remember we talked about that punk that he said you can't do. And now I'm speculating here. Steph was speculating, but I, I think she found something. And he's with his friend Danny Masterson, mind you. Here, watch this other clip from James Corden, where he talks about a punk that went wrong. There's a wonderful story about a a hip hop artist, mm -hmm. very well respected hip hop artist who He's was, not was like hard. He's not small. Like a hard dude. Mm. And we stopped his private plane on the runway and like brought a guy onto the plane to like check out the plane. But then it turns out the guy had what may have been something suspicious in the back of the plane. And they were <laughs> small like- Small puppies. And they, sure. Small puffies. Danny being clever. What did he say? Small puffies smuggling Man. dogs and the guy and they were like ushering the guy off of the plane and he got off the plane and started running and I had to run after him for like two miles no. to catch him because he was just gone like I couldn't like and I'm like dude it's a joke it's a joke and it was his birthday and I got to the end I was like yo shorty it's your birthday and he was like mm. and it, but he was I literally ran after this guy for like two miles to calm him down he's like that ain't even funny that ain't even funny. <laughs> And it was sweat, it was bad. That's when you're from the hood. When you, you So I don't know, man. Uh what what was that, Diddy? Was that was that when the threat came? You think PJ, like you're not airing this shit. Uh <laughs> that's a good theory. That's a solid theory. Huh. Well, so you there's know, something... I did see uh, Go ahead. Diddy. I did have occasion to see Diddy getting pranked today. Um, somebody, you know how Ellen has people on uh, jump out of boxes to scare yes. celebrities. There's one of like a fake Pennywise, the clown from it jumping up out of box and scaring Diddy and he runs and dances. It's like he, he, it's not very, you know, in keeping with the image he would like to uphold how he basically, mm. how he responds. Yeah. Here, here is that. Here is that. I have that. Really? Here he yes. Is. I'm not afraid of clowns. I, but I heard that you were. I mean, that does sound like running away, like Ashton style, <laughs> maybe. Well, from the sound of it, he was describing like another so-called drug mule situation, like a guy with a bag from the back of the plane. Yes. Oh my yes. God. Was he afraid of something else on the plane? We can speculate all day. There's a lot to wonder here. <laughs> But imagine you're doing wondering. a punk and yeah, Ashton, I got drugs on this plane. Don't punk me. <laughs> I got people underneath. What do you do when you don't get to check my plane? Uh, that could definitely be when MTV and Ashton pull the plug on a punk. Again, speculation warning. What do you guys think in the comments? I'm looking. 
We had an amazing show. BJ and Lewis hung out for two hours. If you want to watch the full show, you can always become a popcorn patron. Go over there to watch the full streams. They're always uploaded the next day. Uh, please support us there. It's the best way to give us your support. You can also make sure you just hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Come on, guys, hit the bell so you get notified on all the Diddy Gate alerts. At least smash the like button and tell us your thoughts below. Do you think Ashton Kutcher is sweating? Who else is sweating next? We will be checking your comments out. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're going to redirect you over to Nerd Report 2 from the live. I hope all you are doing well. Stay tuned. We got lots more coming.